Hello guys, welcome. A lot of you came to my Twitch channel asking what they think about the new update on HNG that came out live recently. So as promised, in this video I'm gonna give you my thoughts on two out of the three heavy destroyer tanks in the game. Also, I'm gonna talk about the new map and the new recoil system. I'm going to start off with the M36 heavy tank destroyer aka the Jackson. This beast is very fast and agile. It has a 90mm cannon with a double scope and a really good frontal sloped armor. Depending on your playstyle, this tank can bring a lot of firepower on the battlefield. The downside on this tank is there is no support gunner so you gotta watch your back because most of the time you're gonna face enemies alone. The M36 tank destroyer can move fast and go in and out of battles and surprise the enemy very easy. Another downside of that tank is that it's a bit taller than the other two tank destroyers so it can be spotted a little bit easier. The other tank I want to talk about is the Yak Panther. This tank has 88mm cannon, an inside support gunner seat with 7.92mm machine gun, very good frontal armor and decent forward speed. Down downside for me in on this tank is that it doesn't have an turret and you can't angle yourself in a fight against other enemy tanks, which means you're going head on with only your frontal armor and you can't utilize the side armor of the tank. When your frontal armor is destroyed, you pretty much take full damage and it's also almost impossible to win a fight. Also to aim, you're gonna have to move the whole tank, that means if an enemy gets close to you, you're pretty much dead. Alright guys, my honest opinion, if you ask me uh, what to think about those tanks, is they're not that great and I'm sure not gonna use them personally because your tanker has only 4 slots uh, which you can equip tanks and I wouldn't change economically, I wouldn't change my tank destroyer for a heavy tank destroyer because you're not gonna find that many heavy tank destroyers on the map or in war battles so that pretty much beats the purpose of getting this tank although if you have a second tanker you can equip uh, the other tanks that are like lower tier or including this tank you can put them on your second tanker otherwise i wouldn't use that tank because it's two command points and it's not that great in general both of the tanks uh, i'm not gonna talk about the third tank because i personally don't own a soviet tank i'm not a fan of soviet tanks and not a fan not a big fan of tanking in general but overall those tanks are fun, but not that great. 
Now I'm gonna talk about the new encounter map, it's called Krepust. This is the largest encounter map so far given to us by the developers. It has three objectives that must be captured and controlled and a minimum of controlling two to win the match. This map has a lot of hallways and rooms to hide in. Krepust is the new, has the new vegetation and buildings and it's quite large for an encounter map, which makes it a place for interesting fights both inside and outside the main building. In this hallway uh, where I'm going at the moment, I'm gonna show you few things uh, that I'm gonna address. Uh, there is those sandbags in this hallway uh, don't actually provide cover. They're, the height of those sandbags uh, is such so if you crouch behind them, they're not uh, low enough so you can shoot from cover or you can't jump properly over them. In this room the ceiling is gone, but as you can see uh, I'm having trouble shooting. Uh, so basically they're actual obstacle, not a uh, place where you can take cover. In this next hallway where I'm going at the moment, there there is a second one uh, with the same, the similar sandbag position. In this one, you need to crouch actually to go over the sandbags, which is in this game very clunky and it feels very slow. On both sides of the map, there is staircases that lead to second and third floor, where the third floor is the roof. But in my opinion, the roof and the second floor are absolutely useless because they're nowhere near the points and most of the fights are gonna be on the points. As you can see over here, I managed to find a guy, but I couldn't kill him because the windows are very, very difficult to shoot through. And on the roof, you're gonna see that the ledge is very awkward and it's not facing towards the enemy second and third floor or roof area. So in my opinion, those two floors are absolutely useless. Overall, my opinion, it's a good action-packed map, but it's not very suitable for war. The rooms feel too small, there are too many doors that create choke points and it enables you to hold the enemy outside of the point for basically forever. Another huge thing is the spawn camping or so-called controlling of the spawn. Uh, with the new vegetation, it is super easy to lock the enemy in their spawn and win the game in around 5 minutes. And because it's in counter map, the time is not enough for the enemy team to try flanking. Overall, with the awkward sandbags, narrow hallways, many choke points and doors, practically useless second and third floor, the too colorful vegetation and the option to spawn camp in a game versus a clan, I give this map a generous 3 out of 10 score. Now, last but not least, the Rico animations. Uh, I don't think all of the weapons needed that change, but surely there were some that are really benefiting from this change, like the like. STG MP40 1919 and few others that um, can't care to mention right now. Although Rito says that this change is a new thing, I believe the same animations are taken from the old prone positions and they're slapped on the, pro on the standing and crouched position now. So some of the weapons feel worse, some of the weapons feel better. The fact that is, uh, is a FPS player for a long long time, I feel like this is not such a huge change, uh, it's just a matter of getting used to it. And I swear those hit markers are fucking shit.
Okay. <laughs> okay. I see what you mean. <laughs> Holy shit. I might start playing with this weapon. I might start playing with this thing. Nah, I'm not thinking anything. Most of the ZBV guys don't even want to hear about this game anymore. It's a beast. I think they, they overdid it again, like I said. They went from 0 to 100, and then from 100 to 0 when they nerfed things. This thing with this RPM on bursts is gonna fucking wreck people. Even bursting properly. I saw him on the second floor middle. was it guys thank you so much for watching the video if you liked it please give a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't uh, please also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos from me and uh, leave a comment if you have any pointers thank you so much for watching and i'm gonna see you in the next one